Oh my. Thanks, Laura. Currently 75 degrees in downtown Comanche under cloudy skies and light rain. Time for Coffee Talk brought to you by the Comanche Chamber of Commerce and Agriculture. Check them out at hashtag Explore Comanche Texas as we welcome in Cynthia Newton and Rochelle Calclasure. I get it. You did. All right. Good. I did it. It's gold star for today. With Hope Counseling. Good morning. How are we doing, ladies? Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. So let me tell you a little bit about Rochelle. She okay. is um, an intern with me, so she may, I will see her a little bit off and on um, up here, and then um, when I'm out, she may have to cover. So, oh, man. There you go. Scary, so, scary. she's I'm a breaker in right, you know? This, yeah. is what, this is how it's it. This is how it goes. This is what we do. That's what we do. So, today... I put this on Facebook yesterday, and, you know, a lot of people have commented already and, and shared it, and I appreciate that. And, you know, um, I really wanted to talk about uh, something that's actually near and dear to me and, and how to be an effective single parent and the okay. struggles with that. Sure. And um, because, you know, as a single parent, you're often sitting there. And notice I didn't say single mom. I said single parent. Right. So, <laughs> it goes both ways. It does go both ways. Yes, ma'am. You know, that you're often having to struggle with so much. And sometimes it's like just trying to keep your nose above water. Yeah. Not even your head above water, but yeah. just enough so you can just, you know, trudge through. And, and you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And how do you do that? And what do you do? And, you know, the supports that are out there for you. So, right. um, you know, first off, I mean, it truly is... <laughs> I love this. I mean, it truly is an art and a science to be a successful single parent. Okay, there's there's not a magic cookbook about it. There's not a magic guidebook. I mean, you know, it's something that it, you just jump in and you have to learn. You have to research. I mean, or, you know, go through your support networks, all these things. And if you don't have a lot of support network networks, it's even harder. Sure. So, um, you know, you often... The single parents often will gain self-confidence in their ability to handle challenges and their children become more determined and independent because they see that. They see that in their parent, you know, struggling and going through those those difficult times and learning how to function um, without having to rely on somebody else to help them. Um, there's things that are difficult. It's going to take time if you have been a two uh, household income to becoming a one uh, to adjust to the financial changes right. and expanded household, child care responsibilities, and to be alone. So it's important for you to develop daily habits and routines to smooth the way for you and your children. Um, so we're going to talk about seven habits, and then I'm going to give you a few more after that. Okay. So first off, be proactive. What do you think that means, Michelle? Um, taking action before you actually need to, kind of planning ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. So being proactive, this includes, you know, and it's going to include your counseling, your social out outlets, making sure you have a child care plan, making sure you have a backup child care plan and a backup to your backup child care plan. I'm really not over exaggerating here. So sitting <laughs> there done that. I have. In yeah. fact, this morning I did that. Right. So I'm a little frazzled. So, you know, it was kind of the, oh, no, I need to have my kids some. I mean, I need to be at work and my my sitter can't get to the house because the river's flooded. Imagine that. Anyway, so it's like, okay, what do we do now? Um, so making sure you have those uh, those plans so that when the crisis happens, you're there. You're you're prepared for it. So create a positive vision. We've we've focused on positivity so much, and it's so easy to become negative, sure. especially in this world. But develop a clear picture of where you are heading with your children, and and look and take control of that and, and control of your life. And, and focus positively to see the changes that you want to make and the you want to and your children to, to lay that out. Um, prioritize. Focus on spending time with your kids and positive interactions. For instance, we may have, you know, scheduled game nights or scheduled um, fun times or scheduled outings or things like that when, when you're not so focused on, okay, the cleanup or, you know, the cooking or the, you know, all these other things or the homework, but make sure you schedule some of that fun time as well. So put that as a priority. Um, think win-win. Make peace, okay? Make peace with the, the other parent of your children, okay, whomever that is. Keep it that way. Focus on your children. Okay, don't ever badmouth or argue about them in front of your kids. Um, take on the role of peacemaker. That's you a know, big one right there. Your children will be forced 
at times to take sides if you don't do this. And that's very important because your child has two parents. Okay, it doesn't matter how often that parent comes around or how often they don't come around. Your child has two parents. Okay, they may have bonus parents too, and that's okay. You need to be open and receptive to that. And you need to allow them to be a part of the life. Um, and not be jealous because, hey, the other person's moved on and now there's somebody taking my place, they're not taking your place, it's a bonus. This child now has three or four people to love them instead of just two. So really focus on that. Um, seek first to understand. Open up the lines of communication with your kids, especially those teenagers. It's really sometimes hard to find that. If you have to text them to say, hey, let's talk, <laughs> you know, Because they do already that. know it all now. That's right. <laughs> Be open and honest without giving them too many details or blaming um, others, you know, for, for what's happened in the past. Ensure smooth transitions. So the transitions of going from one house to the next, you know, or even the transition in daily life of what do we what do we need to do and how we need to do this and this is the plan for this week. Develop routine, um, set a schedule so they're they're familiar with it and that keeps it where okay, hey, you know what, we're doing good. We know what's gonna happen. Like, you know, my kids yesterday I said, Okay, what's the plan for the week? Y'all got this on this day, this on this day, they so they know. So they get up this morning and they know. It's not, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing today. You know, it's this this is the plan and I'm prepared for it. Um, make sure to take me time. You know, you can't do this day in and day out by yourself without taking some me time. Um, you know, and sometimes that is very difficult to do, <laughs> especially if you have younger children, sure. okay? Because sometimes it's like, I just can't even get away for five minutes. Mom. I just want to take a shower and leave me alone. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> yeah, so, they don't want to talk to you all day, but you go get in the bubble bath. It's you know, inevitable. Yes. Yeah. They're not talking to you at all and you get on the phone and it's Mom. like, oh, oh, I mean, inevitable that they're going to interrupt during that uh. time. So make sure you are taking that time and set aside, you know, your expectations for your children to do things maybe while you're taking that time or, hey, go do this. Um, but, you know, I'm still available. Make sure they know you are available, but make sure you take time. It's great if you have a sitter and you can take some me time once a week to say, okay, I'm going to do this um, for all of that. And that thing did that thing. So can you hit the continue button? Oh, make yeah. sure we don't stop. Um, yeah. Anyway, so... There you go. So what do you what do you think? When, when, when we look at this, there's so much to cover about this, and I'm, I'm just like ha ah, flabbergasted because there's so many there's so many things. Did <laughs> you important. look through it this morning? <sighs> yeah, so I'm a little like decompressing here at the moment too. So you know, I mean, she it's, came in here know. with that mom look on her face, like exactly. I was thinking, what did I do wrong? <laughs> oh man, I hope I ain't in the crosshairs of this. <laughs> so you know, I mean, you come back. I mean. Focusing on the things that are truly important and learning to let other things go. Let go of what you can't control. I couldn't control this morning that the river mm -hmm. was out. Cut the babysitter away. Yeah, I couldn't control that. I oh. mean, so, okay, so revamp, regroup, okay. Um, thank goodness I have early risers at my office that could help gather things together and, you know, things like that. I mean, so you, you look and you do and you get there. Be patient with your children, okay? Your children are going to follow the vibe that you give them, the right. vibe that you set off. We've talked yeah. about this over and over. You've got to be patient. You've got to be understanding. You've got to be open. But you also have to make sure you're setting a positive vibe for, vibe for them. Uh, set effective limits and boundaries. Oh, they've been through so much. So who cares if they don't clean their room this one time? Or who cares if they, you know, let them watch that extra 30 minutes of television even though they're not supposed to? The first time you give in and you do that, guess what? You've lost it. <laughs> you are no longer in control. They are the ones running your household. Inch becomes a mile in a hurry. That is right. That is right. Is it hard? Yes. Right. You know, after a long day at work and you come home and your kids have to, you know, whatever, and you've got to say, okay, clean your rooms up, do all this. I don't want to get up and go check and make sure they did it. I want to believe that they did it. But if I don't get up and go check it and they didn't do it, then guess what? They're not going to do it tomorrow. Either. They're not going to do it tomorrow and they got away with it. Yeah. Absolutely. So that follow-up is just as important. And it's hard and it's tiring because you don't want to. You want to just relax, especially if you're working, trying to navigate all of this. Um, just remember, you're equipping your child with the best tools possible and the self-esteem to move forward in life. Okay? So just be aware that just because you've transitioned maybe to becoming being a single parent or you've been a single parent all along I mean 
there's nothing easy about that. You know, you're going to you're going to learn as you go. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make a, mistakes as a parent that's not single. OK, parents are not perfect. Kids, if you're listening to this, parents are not perfect. <laughs> so most kids are probably asleep right now. I am not perfect. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of things. First off, financially, we talked a little bit about it. budget, 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 budget. Sit down, make a budget for yourself. Because you only have so much money you're going to spend. You, you have to spend. I mean, everybody only has so much money. But setting a budget, living within that budget, you know, giving your kids or setting up an allowance where they know, hey, I have this much money I can use this week, that's teaching them budgeting skills. Right. Okay? So then they know, oh, we go somewhere and I'm not going to ask, I want to buy this or I want to buy that. Well, do you have the money? No. Then sorry. You know, so you're teaching them budgeting as well as for you, and you're not making sure you're going and you're buying extra stuff that you don't have money for. So that's really important. So create that budget. Keep it up, updated. Um, put your bills on auto pay. I know some people are like, wait a minute, I can't do that. But that's kind of an important thing if you can at all figure a way to do that because then if they're on auto pay, that money's out. You're not worried about, okay, I've got to make sure I pay my electric bill this month or I've got to pay this this month. You know, because it's, it's coming out and you're not counting extra money, okay? Right. But if you're unavail unable to do that, I completely understand. But make sure that your bills come first. Because you can't survive if you don't have a house over your he uh, kids' heads or a utility paid or something of that nature. Absolutely. Okay? Take advantage of government programs. If you are a single parent, if you're, um, I mean, if you're a multifamily parent household, okay, don't, don't be ashamed. Those programs are out there to help you. I mean, you know, they get a bad rap. And people will sometimes give them a bad rap, but realize that, you know, I might be able to pay my house payment or my rent, or I might be able to pay my electric bill, but then it's going to cost me, and I'm not exaggerating here, you know, $800 a month to put food on my table for three children this summer. Oh, yeah. Easy. Yep. For, mine, for me, it's probably more because I have all boys. But, <laughs> I mean, easy. Okay, so where does that money come from? Okay, that's what the government programs are there. Help you look at food stamps, look at what, look at some of those stuff. I mean, don't be ashamed to use it. If you only need it for a temporary time, then be uh, uh, be aware and say, you know, I don't need this this whole time, but I'm going to use it while I can. You know, right. be aware of your um, food programs out there, the the boxes, you know, the food boxes, the food pantries, the things like that. Utilize them. That, that That's what they're there for to help you, okay? Learn how to say no. <laughs> You don't need to get into the nitty-gritty of your finances with your kids, but just be able to say no, okay? You don't always have to say yes. You know, you may be somewhere, I want a gumball out of that machine. No, not today. Do yeah. you have that money? No, not today, you know? That may only be 25 cents, but that may be 25 cents that you could be putting towards something else. Oh, it's not 25. There, little Susie got a new iPad for That's getting good right. grades. Well. That's right. <laughs> So find a support work network. Join up with other single parents. I mean, you know, for those of y'all that, that are following us on Facebook, there are single parent groups all over Facebook, communities. You know, you may be embarrassed to talk to people in your local community. Guess what? Facebook is all over the world. <laughs> so you can, you know, hook up and find support from people in other locations as well. Sleepover exchanges, you know, give yourself a break. Do some of that back and forth of, hey, can you take, you know, y'all want the kids go to somebody's house for a weekend and you take their kids for a weekend or something of that nature. Yeah. Carpool share, um, rely on your customers. Not everybody has that, That's you know, right. but That's if you do, you're blessed and use that support network, okay? But don't overuse to the point that they don't that's an important thing because it's easy to take advantage of your family it truly is um, and it's easy to take advantage of some of that but don't so just be aware of what you're doing and don't overuse but you utilize them as helps um, okay I've like covered a lot of this already get on a daily routine and stick to it Try, try try creating mealtime lists or snacks or a system. Okay, it's really important to keep your kids, especially now that we're out of school, on a routine, a meal routine. You know, plan out your menu for a week. You know, okay, this is what we're going to do. Teach them how to cook. Best time to teach them how to cook is during the summer. You know, my son, my nine-year-old son yesterday said, you know, I really want to learn how to make hamburgers. Okay, we can figure that out. I've got a... a what are those things called? Oh, a George Foreman grill. You can oh, tell. Yeah. I use it a lot. <laughs> those are quite handy. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I think I can actually handle teaching him how to do that. And, right. I mean, he just learns more and more. Sure. Um, and that's not playing with fire, you know. And so that's always a good, that's always a good thing. 
Yeah. You don't necessarily want to graduate them to the propane or the, the fire grow, and so <laughs> they might be just a tiny bit older. Make sure your kids have chores, okay? Um, I don't know how many kids I've seen, and I go, well, what are your chores for the summer? I don't have any. Yeah. Okay, your kids do need to have chores. I don't care if they're two or 17. They need to have chores to help you because you can't do it all. Exactly. You can't do it all, okay? Your kids need to learn. They need to learn how to do the dishes. They need to learn how to do the laundry. They need to learn how to vacuum. They need to learn how to clean the bathroom. They need to learn. So give them chores so that they can do it. It may not be perfect, moms and dads, but guess what? They're learning. You can yep. come back and say, okay, we, maybe we need to do this a little better and do this a little more so that they're learning. Okay, outsource what you can. Um, if you have the cash in your budget to bring in help, look into what would be the most helpful to outsource. So make sure you're looking um, in and thinking outside the box, okay? Plan free time for the kids, for yourself, okay? I mean, I know you're like, plan free time, but yeah, plan free time, you know? Especially if you've had a weekend. And we've had, I mean, my kids and I have had a weekend of work, 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 work. And it was like, let's just go swimming for a couple hours, you know? Let's Heck just yeah. take a break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got all this other stuff we still need to do, but I want you to know that I appreciate everything that you've done and we've gotten so much accomplished. Let's take a break. Let's let's have some free time. Let's go swimming. Let's paint rocks. Let's whatever. Find something that they can do that they can enjoy. Let's work on a puzzle. Yeah. So anyway, there's so much more, guys. I mean, just be sure to follow us on Facebook if you have questions or anything. Um, you know, we're always here for you at Hope Counseling of Texas. You know, if you are a single parent and you're just floundering right now, especially with summer, please know that we're here to support you in any possible way. Uh, at Hope Counseling of Texas with offices in four locations, and it really looks like it's about to start raining hard, um, in Comanche, Dublin, uh, Hamilton, and Eastland. So you can call us at 325-356-1105 or reach out to us on Facebook at Hope Counseling of Texas. Um, we're here to help you. So. All right, Cynthia and Rochelle, thanks for stopping All by. All right, thank you, thank and you. we'll see you next week. That wasn't too bad, was it, Rochelle? It wasn't. <laughs> All right, Jody, you've seen her right now on the Ox.